Welcome to Smacky's Garage. Today, we're gonna to be looking at how to use a digital multimeter. Digital multimeters are incredibly important for any hobbyist that's doing anything with electrical work. I do, I use it a lot on my vehicles. I use it a lot in the house. So it's important that you know exactly how it works and how it functions and how to use it. So in this video, we're gonna walk through two different types of digital multimeters. We're gonna look at the difference between this red one here and this yellow fluke meter. We're going to look at how, how do each one of these different functions work on the digital multi multimeter. And then we're gonna use each one to test something to show how to do it. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the difference between these two devices. All right, so we have two different devices here. This one's by Craftsman, this one's by Fluke. This is the one that I originally started out with before I moved up to the Fluke 107. For someone starting out, I would recommend this product here, the Fluke 107 over the Craftsman because it simplifies a lot of the process and makes things easier. The main difference between them is the dial. For this dial, you don't have to go through and set the range as you would on the Craftsman. So for this one, you have to send a range if you're looking at volts DC, whether you're looking at 200 volts DC, 600 volts DC, or 20 volts DC. This Fluke here does everything for you and it has auto range. You can see it in the bottom here popping up. Another nice feature of this Fluke is it also has a lighting feature. So it's not that bright, but you can see that it does light up. The Fluke also has a hold feature so that if you're measuring a voltage, you can push this button and it'll hold for you. So in this video, we're gonna focus on looking at the Fluke. Everything here is the same, except you need to set your ranges. So on the Fluke, like others, you'll have three inputs. This one's used for measuring amperage or current. This is the common, which will be used for either one of these. And then this will be for everything else. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna walk through each one of these different features, and then we'll go ahead and test each one out. So the first one is to measure AC volts. This will measure voltage like that's in your wall current, something that has a sine wave. You typically use this more in household applications than you do on vehicle applications or hobbyist applications. Usually on a smaller project, you end up using DC voltage, which is the next one. So you can see up here, it changes from volts to volts, DC, volts AC to volts DC. This is what you're gonna use on vehicles or anything that's running uh, DC voltage for the elect to provide electricity. Next is millivolts. So this is looking at millivolts in the AC range. This is looking at kind of a smaller range of voltage. Next is looking at ohms or the resistance. So we'll use this to measure the resistance across a resistor. Next is capacitance. You can see it's measured in nanofarads. A capacitor is a device that stores electrical energy in an electric field. It's a passive electronic component with two terminals like this and the effect of the capacitor is known as capacitance. So you see capacitance used in a lot of different locations, whether it's energy storage, or you're looking at power conditioning, or suppression and coupling. You also see it used in filtering of signals. And the last one we're gonna look at is current. So when we move to current, we're gonna end up using these two, so amperage and the common, to look at the current through a device. When we do current, it's gonna be wired up differently to the device. You're not checking kind of in parallel with a circuit. You're checking in series with a circuit where when we're here measuring everything else, we're gonna be in parallel with that specific device that we're measuring. So let's go ahead and look at the first one, which is AC voltage. So for AC voltage, since we're looking at voltage and not amperage, we need to connect our leads. So this is a lead kit that I picked up off of Amazon. I'll have it linked in the description below. I find having a lead kit like this extremely helpful when I'm doing any sort of electronics because it gives you options for connecting through kind of leads like this or to use alligator clips to hold it in place. So I'm gonna put red to the voltage and this to common. Now, so I'm gonna just, all that I'm gonna do here is now I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna to measure to my AC signal and 
do that, on this, I'm just going to use an outlet. So you can see the AC voltage coming through the house is about 122 volts AC. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to check frequency. To be able to check frequency, we're on voltage AC still. We're going to press the Hertz button, which will give us the frequency of what we're measuring. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push the out. He's back into the socket again, and we should see 60 Hertz. So you can see now we're at 60 Hertz, so we're getting the correct reading. Next, we're going to look at DC voltage. So we're not going to end up changing the connections here since we're still looking at voltage. Now looking at DC voltage, we're going to measure the voltage of a 9 volt battery. So you can see the positive and the negative here. I'm going to take it, I'm going to put the red to the positive, and then the black to the negative. We should see around 9 volts. So now we're going to move on to resistance. So measuring resistance, I have some of these 2.2 kilo ohm resistors that I'm going to pull out and we're going to test. So for resistance, I expect to see 2200 on this because that's the way it's labeled. Go from one side to the other side. And you can see I'm 2.16 K ohms. So close to the 2200 that it's supposed to be. These are a gold fourth band, so that means it's 5% tolerance on it, so it's within tolerance of the resistor. Now to check continuity, you go to the resistance and you push this yellow button once and it'll change the, change the function. So now when I'm making contact, it should beep. So you can see I'm making contact, there's a low resistance, and you hear the noise. It's good for checking shorts in circuits. Next, we're going to look at capacitance. So for capacitance, we're going to take one of these devices and we're just going to put, measure the capacitor, capacitance across it. You can see this is a 10 microfarad capacitor. I'm going to measure it. You can see that we changed from nanofarads to microfarads. So I need to try to get my hands off this so we can do it. So you can see the 10 microfarad capacitor now showing at a 10.3 microfarads here. So that is used to measure the capacitance. And the last one is amperage. So to measure amperage, we need to actually change this to this side and we need to go in series within the circuit. So we're going to take this nine volt battery and we're going to attempt to power this Radio Shack 12 volt mini lamp. So we're going to go from here to here and see it's lighting up. To measure the current across it, now this is the circuit that you have when it's operating. We need to pull one of these leads off and we need to put the digital multimeter in series with it. So to do that, I'm going to take these clips. I'm actually going to put them on. This one on here, this one on here. These are when these come in really handy. So I'm going to go in this circuit. We go to positive this side. And the negative here. And you can see as it's lighting up, the current went up to about 0 0.02 amps or 20 milliamps. So to be able to use this feature on the multimeter, you have to be connected to these specific ports and you have to be on the amperage. Now if we're going to, typically when I leave it, I'm using the voltage side, so I'm going to put it back to here and we'll keep it here for now. Well that's it. That's as simple as it is to use a digital multimeter. I'll leave everything linked below in the comments if you want to pick them up. Thanks for tuning in to Smacky's Garage. I'll see you next time.